episode 183 above ground podcast do jingle bells rock disclaimer the hosts of this podcast will foley and tpp are not medical professionals and this is not medical advice both will and tpp have firsthand experience with mental illness they have their own perspective and own thoughts on mental health challenges above ground podcast was birthed to help those who struggle with their mental health through honest dialogue By speaking openly and sharing tools, they foster connection. By fostering connection, they convey hope. With connection and hope, we can continue to increase awareness. These conversations aim to break down the walls while building stronger foundations for positive mental health. This is Above Ground Podcast. Coming at you live with real conversations about mental health from the peer perspective. it's time for Above Ground Podcast. Now your hosts... TPP and Will Foley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 183 of Above Ground Podcast. Above Ground Podcast, because you can't serve below. Ooh, that's right. You down with TPP? What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? What's happening? Dude, it's the fucking holidays, and I'm stressing. It's the holidays. It's beginning to look a lot like anxiety. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like. All kinds of things. Beginning to look a lot like alcoholism. It's beginning to look a lot like stress. It's beginning to look a lot like, I don't know, fucking jingle bells unhelpful are falling down. Unhelpful distractions. Yeah, very unhelpful distractions. Well, how are you? Well, so, well, first, let's let's talk about this. So, happy holidays to everyone out there, man. It is December. Uh, I wanted to thank Abby and uh, Capital Region Living for having our little profile in their Capital Region uh, holiday ep- issue, um, which you can get right now everywhere at uh, Hannaford Stewart's if you're in the 518, or you can check it out online too because they're really cool like that and they have an online version. But uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the holidays and just about the stress and the not just the stress, but how we're doing just in general during the holidays and what we can do to to keep ourselves grounded and staying above man right yeah i mean how how the holidays can affect us and obviously they can affect different people different ways so um i don't know we'll just kind of came to me and said we should we should talk about it <laughs> so here we are <laughs> yeah we are here we are man we're talking about the holidays and some of the stuff that some of the stuff that really really does get us man during the holidays are stress loneliness and exhaustion yep and how do we combat all those if we're dealing with them and can we combat them and and do we deal with them all at the same time no we deal with them just like an elephant one bite at a time one bite at a time i don't understand why we're eating elephants i never understood this but hey well we're not i mean somebody was (laughs) you know um you know i wrote down a couple things that um just came to mind for you know tackling these things i guess you could say is um number one i wrote uh take time out you know take a time out for yourself um you know either if it if you have to go in your room to a quiet place just sit or you know if you're in a if you're in a if you're in a room with you know if you're already immersed in the holiday explosion if you're um you know in a in a house or something like that you know take a take a walk outside by yourself Um, take a walk right around the house if you have to, or just down to the end of the driveway, whatever it is, you know, even the cool air, um, can help with that. So just take a time out. Yeah. Timeouts are really good, man. Timeouts are good. You know, I do tend to find myself pacing around the house a lot more. Yeah. Luckily, well, for right now I have a, a fairly wide space as that will change after the new year. Um, but we'll get in. We'll save that for another episode after the first of the year comes. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about in the new year. But before we get to the new year, we got to get through the holidays. <laughs> yes, <man. laughs> we do. yes, we do. One step at a time. One mm-hmm. one moment. One day at a time. Whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, that's a you know. I guess that that would be another thing. Just since that you you um you brought it up, that would be another thing that I wrote down was. Um, remind yourself that that the holidays come and go. Yeah, they're not here forever, man. They're just they're just one part of the season, right? And 
this season does bring all kinds of anxiety for people. Anxiety to be able to afford gifts, anxiety about dealing with family, anxiety about dealing with shopping and not having enough money and just all these things, man, that like all these layers of shit that that culture, I want to say, has put on us because it wasn't like this. That's why I think Thanksgiving is always my favorite holiday because it's only about getting together, celebrating and eating. Right. And and look, I, I know that that's not not everybody has that luxury to to have a really good meal all the time. But that's what really I like Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving to me is the last holiday before all the shit storm starts, man. And I'm not even like I've I I thought I had Christmas spirit back over the last couple of years because Willard the Elf appeared and made me very happy and I We're decided gonna see it. we haven't seen an appearance from Willard the Elf, have we? No, Willard is stuck in Willard is stuck in in the North the Pole. North Pole. <laughs> no, he's actually stuck in the South Pole, really. <laughs> With Heat Miser? Yeah, he is. He's stuck in the South Pole this year and he's not coming. Uh he decided not to fly up this year and uh grace his presence because there's just no spirit here in Whoville. Yeah. I I I get it. I usually uh I'm usually full of spirit. I usually um thoroughly enjoy the holidays. In fact, um just driving here tonight, um there's there's a ton of houses that are like lit up to the T's and to see the lights. I I don't know if it if it brings me back to when I was a kid or what, but it's just the feeling of seeing the lights and um I don't know, it just puts me in a in a good mood. I don't know. Did you go up to quick response yet this year? No. They do, they increased it. Yeah. 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 We went up on Thanksgiving. Just because it's tough with a teenager, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a preteen, so. They don't care about lights or Christmas spirit. I'm glad mine still does. Yeah. 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 Cherish it. I am. Cherish it as long as you can. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's coming. It's coming. (laughs) It's coming. (laughs) It is coming. So. Obviously, with stress comes exhaustion. Yeah. And exhaustion, I mean, if you're already fighting. So, well, let I just wanted to go back because something kind of came to me today as I was reading through stuff um, at work and about seasonal affect disorder. Mm. And a lot of people have that, have have versions of that. And even if it's not a diagnosed thing in you, when when the sun starts to get lower sure. and the days get darker, and I I've dealt with seasonal affect my since I was a very very young kid without realizing what it was, and I always thought it was just the stress of school and change and yeah right 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 change the seasons and everything yeah and... yeah because change sucks for me so I think even as an adult uh, for a lot of us you know you you leave the house in the morning and it's dark. And then when you get home after work, now it's dark. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's, it's always dark. It's just always dark. So it, it it has a little bit of an effect. Have you ever used a light box? Ah, uh, no. I I no. My therapist a long time ago had had told me about it, and she actually had one, but she had let um, a client use it at at that point. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna buy one. And I think I had it. I think I still have it on my like list to buy and i just i just have yet to buy it so i know somebody who's been using one and they tend to like it um but i don't i don't know if it's i don't know if i would benefit from it or not really i don't know i don't i mean it's worth a try it is worth everything's worth a try you know like 20 minutes or something in the morning yeah that's what they say like when you first wake up or whatever yeah but i i haven't been getting out like normal either I've been running around so yeah, crazy that I haven't had a chance to really. Well, that's another thing. I think with the holidays, I think everyone's running around, you know, not being mindful, and and they're just, you know, kind of running themselves to burnout almost. You know, it's like whether you're whether you're running around with extra holiday hours at work, you know, like maybe you want to pick up some extra hours for overtime, and you know, so you can get more presents and. Then you're running around buying presents and running around doing favors and getting rid. If, if you're somebody that 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 you know hosts a, a Christmas dinner or party, then you have that on top of your plate to you know prepare for that because you know everyone gets anxious and they have to have things perfect. 
for people when they come to the house because if it doesn't look perfect, then that means you're not perfect. And well, we we can't have that. <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair with that one. <laughs> well, that's I you know that's people feel that way you know. Yeah, no, they do. They do. Everything's got to have its neat little place, and and if it's not in that place, they get. That yeah. get that gets them out of sorts. It does, which I get because I'm OCD in that aspect. So yeah, I am. Yeah, but I think that actually brings us to my next thing that I wrote down was, uh, you know, you know the holidays are coming, so review your boundaries. You know, kind of go over a scenario in your head before you enter into that situation. Maybe last year something happened, and you're thinking about it. Maybe you're unconsciously thinking about it, and that's that's bringing on anxiety, and you don't realize it. Um, so just try and be mindful, and, and like sit down and give yourself a break, and and just kind of um, review things and, and go over your boundaries in your head. And you know, if, if a certain family member pisses you off or whatever, if or if um, you know, if you get if if you get bothered by certain times, whether it's gift giving or um, you know, if there's too many kids in the room and they're yelling and screaming, it's just too sensory. Again, just take, you know, just be mindful of that and, and take a break and, you know, find a, go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Find a, find an empty space for, you know, a few minutes and just take a couple breaths. Yeah. That actually kind of reminds me of this commercial I've been seeing on TV recently where the, this gentleman is with his family for like the first time and he's got a dog with him. And everybody's in the house, and he just kind of, he's like looking around, and he you can tell he doesn't necessarily want to not be there, but he doesn't want to be there. But mm. then he goes outside to just kind of be outside, and then everybody follows him. Oh, and it's, but it's, but it's true. It's like, like some people, like setting boundaries, if you don't have any, is very hard. Yeah. Especially if you're setting them in, you know, in the moment. I well, right. You have to kind of, it's a, I think it's a process. You have to kind of, you have to lay them out and understand them for yourself and, and know when to uphold them. And then practice them. And then practice them. Yeah, yeah. and you got to practice them. I think them. practicing them is, is being in those situations. Yeah, absolutely, but yeah. you can't leave it till the, to the right. most stressful moment. Right. you got to use them like every day when you're yeah. sitting in traffic on the way to work. and Right. You know, especially now, like I've noticed my commute home like just the last couple of weeks and tonight yeah. even. I don't know if it was the full moon or what, dude, but that moon is beautiful outside. I think it was, was it last? I feel it was last night or tonight. Tonight. Was, oh, my God. Okay. It was so big coming up the Northway. If you're in the 518, coming up the Northway is like one of those commutes that, you know, used to be very, very, very slow. And now since COVID, it's, it's not nearly as slow, but... It's still pretty goddamn hectic with people yeah, just like cutting in and out of traffic yeah, and it's, shit. It's, yeah, I don't like to hit that. That's, well, we try not to. It's hairy on a on a good day. Yeah, it is. And I got I got a habit of looking in my rearview mirror and watching people slam on their brakes, and then I tense up and I'm like, and I get and I start getting angry, and that that old that old troll comes out of me, and I'm ready to. <laughs> uh, um, I wrote down also. Uh, just be mindful in general, but um, be mindful of, of what you eat, um, what your sleep, what your sleeping habits look like. Um, you know, maybe if you feel more on edge than usual, try to um, avoid alcohol or, you know, maybe less junk food and sugar. Um, you can also take a social media break. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think, you know, some, some of us that may not have um, you know, families or intact families or families the way that we wish they would be. Um, you can see other other pictures and other people on on social media um, smiling in their pretty perfect pictures, and and you know it can bother some people. And um, whether they want to admit it or not, it, it just it, it's it's a good idea to to take a break from social media. Yeah, that kind of brings us to the next point of loneliness. Sure. Uh, loneliness is very amplified during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Loss, grief, all those types of things that we we struggle with in a normal time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are kind of they're on like emphasis. eleven plus. Yeah, you know, <laughs> turn it up to eleven. <laughs> turn it up to eleven, and maybe break off the volume knob at eleven, and just it just gets louder and louder. 
Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. It does get louder and louder. Like, it feels like it's more in your face. That's maybe what it is. Yeah, like, maybe you know, it is. It could feel lonely. And then, again, with the holidays, it's... I, I don't... You know, it's... it's And I'm not saying it in a, in a, in a negative way, but the, the our culture, you know, we... Holiday movies are always families, and you know what I mean? It's like lights, and everyone's, you know, drinking eggnog, and and, and if you don't have that, yeah, it's going to accentuate your feeling of loneliness. Yeah, but I will say this. One of the big com- combatants of loneliness is service. And in the, ho- and the holidays, man, there is no shortage of opportunities to serve. And everybody's doing a toy drive. Everybody's doing something. And you can find something to combat that loneliness, even if it's just for a short amount of time. Because again, sometimes the things that we really need only need to be in small doses to make a beneficial... Uh, a, to, to, yeah, exactly. And I think I think I think it's it's almost twofold because it's going to make a mark on the person that you're helping, and then I think when you walk away, it's going to leave a mark on yourself. Absolutely, man. It's starting around Thanksgiving. I mean, we all know all the people that line up to go work at the Equinox Thanksgiving dinner. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the the amount of people that yeah, yeah, yeah. that it takes to do that dinner, but the amount of people that show up every year to do that is incredible. That people want to do that, but what we realize is that. See, you can't just do it during the holidays because right. I, and I know it's it's easier for us to do it during the holidays. I get it because we as a as a culture, we feel like, oh, you know, we got to make something happen before the end year end and make our year something, whatever. I mean, I'm not I don't want to I don't want to judge why people do things because that's not my place. But we have to realize that you can't combat loneliness over the course of a week and expect to not be lonely. So again, like all these, all these things that we talk about are, are staircases or ladders that you got to start at the first rung or start at the first stair and then work your way up Mm. to the top floor, man, before you can get out of the basement. So you got to start little and it starts like you get out in the best time of the season, maybe in the summertime and you go, maybe you go, maybe you go serve soup at a soup kitchen because guess what? There's a lot of people, that starve all year long right? And, and soup kitchens are open all year long and toy drives don't just start in November toy drives start right after the Christmas holiday to for the next year. And sure. I've seen no shortage of shortages in these places. So if you can monetarily support, do it. Yeah. It makes you feel good. Believe me. It's not, it's not about, you know, some people have this preconceived notion or this thought that, you know, oh, oh, they should be able to, to, to get their stuff. Why should I help? It's, it's because helping makes you feel good, man. It's not, it, it, and I'm not saying that you always have to get something out of it, but you will get something yeah. out of it. It's, I don't think it, and I don't, and I don't, I don't look at it as, I mean, obviously, if you're doing, I mean, whatever, man. But if you are doing it for that, then I don't know. I don't know if that's even a bad thing within itself. It's well, like, altruism has a little bit of, I mean, all altruism starts, I think, with a little bit of, hey, I want to feel good and yeah, I want to know I that mean, I'm doing something. And some people just really allow that ego to take over that. And they're like, well, I've done my part by just putting up this, but... I'm not going to contribute to it, but I'm going to let everybody else contribute to it. Because mm-hmm. I've seen that this year too, where you know you 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 put up things and you say, "Hey, you can drop off stuff here," but then the people who set that thing up they don't contribute. They think by contributing it's giving the space, but yet, okay, uh, I I you know it's yeah, it is what it is. I it guess is what you it know? is. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. In that in that case, just. Uh, you know, just focus on what you do, and and <clears throat> if you're if you're giving, then then just worry about that for now, and uh, just do the best that you can do on any given day. Yeah, that's what we try to do. Well, we always yeah. try to do our best. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, our best is you know sometimes not the same as it is every day. Oh no, it changes from day to day. I think your best can change. You know, but I think by doing that, you you can create less 
less problems, less future problems, less future hurdles, you know, because let's face it, we all have, have been there and, you know, tomorrow's here and we're like, oh, I should have done this better or I should have, you know what I mean? But if you, if you go into it and just kind of, hey, I'm human, you know, let's, let's add the human factor and say, this is the best I can do right now for, for today. And, you know, if I need to do more tomorrow, I will we'll try again tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I think it'll just it, it just helps you, the person, you know, like if you dwell on it and like empty your cup over it and then, you, you know, trying tomorrow is going to be even harder, you know. Oh, yeah. Your, your best tomorrow may even be less than today. Yeah, you got to leave some in the cup every day because yeah. it's harder to replenish everything in an empty cup than it is to replenish something that's in a cup that's got a little bit left in it. Because you can't exhaust yourself, but it's easy to do that, and 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 we all have different levels of exhaustion. <laughs> what what exhausts right. me may not exhaust you, but what exhausts you may not exhaust me. Yeah, and if you're, you know, the problem too is if you're if you're already in the grips of loneliness or depression, you know, it's hard to to recognize these things. It's hard to kind of step aside and say, you know, um, actually, while we're talking about this, just a quick shout out to Steve Yachik. Um, a friend of ours, fellow listener, advocate. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, what's up, buddy? Happy holidays, my friend. Um, but you know, going by what you were just talking about, I think it 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 goes to something else I wrote down was uh, you know, practice self compassion. Yes. Give self-care. yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace, man. Because, you know, this again, we can't do all this. When we're struggling, we just got to do a little bit to get us to get us out of that snowbank. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't. I mean, you can't shovel three feet of snow a foot at a time. It's just you got to yeah. go a shovel at a time, and and it's tiring, man. It is tiring. It man. is, and that's 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 another. I guess I guess maybe that's where the self compassion come in because it is tiring. And some days you you feel defeated by the snow, and you want to throw the shovel and. <laughs> you want to throw the shovel? You want to? Yeah. You want to bash somebody over the head with it? Sometimes you just want to dive into the snowbank. You that know? could be. But you know what you should do? Jump on a sled and go sleigh riding in it. Have some fun in it, man. Enjoy it. Go. That's a good way to flip it. Yeah, because well, what do you? So I know we've kind of concentrated on the negative side hmm. of the holidays, but as you and I have had many conversations over the last few weeks, there's lots of good things going on for both of us. But then on the other side of that, there's lots of heavy things going on Mm. on the other sides of it. And how are you going to get through the holidays? Like, what are you doing to bolster your, your whatever it is to get out of a depression, to bolster confidence, whatever it is that you're struggling with. Cause I know I've been struggling with my own, self-confidence lately i've had a little bit of doubt Mm. and stuff but i keep getting up every morning and keep fighting a good fight and i keep going into the ring and i get punched a couple times and (laughs) then then i punch back a couple times well i think and i i think that really describes kind of what i what i would say is that's the best way to do is just keep getting up and getting it back into the ring yeah well rocky said it best man you know i didn't hear no bell (laughs) <laughs> no bell <laughs> cut me mick <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's and again it's it's tough to do some days you don't want to get in that ring and and some days you make it into the ring and you can't even muster up a, enough strength to punch back no you, you know, get so knocked you, flat on you, your ass you, you take some punches and get knocked flat on your ass so um and again you know if you can get up again tomorrow and do it again i i would love to be able to say that it will pay off and and hopefully get better yeah well we know that nothing hits harder than life man i know i know and, and i i for me i think you know i i've been really uh trying to um i don't know really look within lately more so than usual and just i i noticed that almost for for me and you know again this is you know may may have a bit of a cognitive distortion on top of it but I feel like I feel like I'm just going from distraction to distraction to distraction to distraction like hopping back yeah? and forth. Yeah, like there's not nothing that is like I can kind of just sit and go, yeah, cool and like you know, I'm like always looking, you know, 
throw on a movie or the music or take a drive or take a walk or, you know. Well, obviously you're distracting yourself from stuff that, right? you know, is that resistance to dealing with it or is I it more a of a, or is it more of a, or is it more of a self care sort it's of It's a little distract? bit of both. Is yeah. It? Yeah. I think there's a little bit of resistance, but I have been, again, noticeably sitting and, and just saying like, uh, I'm feeling this, I'm hurt, I'm scared, I don't know what's going to, you know, the, all these things that I'm, that I'm feeling, I'm trying to just name them and sit with them and just go, okay, these are what, these are what I'm feeling, you know, so for me, I'm just trying to lean in a little bit more because I can do that, but I'm, I'm very scared to get caught, and I, I, I've, in the past, I've tend to get stuck within those. Like I can get to that point, but as soon as I'm like, oh yeah, I can feel that I'm, I'm feeling this, this, and this. But then I'm like, I start doing that and leaning in and then I get stuck and then I can't, and I, I don't know if I panic and I can't get out, but it, it's you, just, it's, you, it's hard to navigate myself out of those feelings or emotions. Is it like a riptide where you yeah. can't, where you got to swim from side to side rather than swimming into the Perfect. current? Perfect. Yep. Um, I, I, I can, I, yeah, okay, I can talk. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long day, man. Um, yes, I concur, because I, I've been feeling that myself. I, I've, I found myself asking for help more to whatever spiritual. Which is good for you, I think. It, it is, but it's been very unnerving, because I've realized that I am, like, I thought I was past a certain point and then life kind of threw some life kind of kicked me in the balls. That healing journey is a bitch, ain't it? It is. You know, it's funny <laughs> because don't be careful what you ask for because you will get it. It's just that you don't get to choose the timeline and you don't get to choose how much you get to learn at the time. And you, you want to yeah, learn. And it, I don't think sometimes you don't realize it, you know, and I, and I, and it's funny that you say that because that's one, another thing that I've been doing is, um, is asking myself like, you know, maybe, maybe part of this is preparing me for what I asked for, but I can't have what I asked for yet because I need to gain some resilience or I need to gain this. So this is what I have to go through. Well, I love it because that's really what it is, is that you, the teachers are there. They appear when you're ready, right? right? We don't always want to hear what the teachers have to <laughs> no, say. I, do not. I mean, and you and you know this. You have a really good relationship with one of your teachers from school. Yeah. Because you've mentioned her in the book. Yeah. And I also had a very special relationship with teachers over my lifetime because I've had a couple of really, really involved teachers. Like when I got to high school, because at at that level, I think you start to realize what mentors and and people are. It's not like grammar school. When you get to high school, you're you got a little different stuff. You're going through all the sauce mm, and mm -hmm. you're like, you know, and then you you tend to meet these mentors if if you recognize it. I when I was fortunate yeah. enough to recognize it but not take all the advice that I was given. It's dude, this is crazy. This is so funny because literally like 2 hours ago I just I talked to her Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and we were kind of talking about the same thing. And I even said to her, you know, I'm like, was I that like, did I not listen at all? She's like, oh, sometimes. You and I said, and I, and I stopped her. I said, you know what, though? I said, I think I, I could be wrong, but I think in that age group, I think it's not necessarily <clears throat> listening or about saying, OK, like I get it and understanding it. I think it's what I told her now, looking back on it, I think it was more of a feeling for me. Like you, you have said things, you have, you know, you, you've ingrained things, but, and I may not have accepted them at the time, but during that time, you gave me a sense of, of safety and comfort. So it was more of like, I remember that more than the message. If that oh, makes sense. I like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I could see that. I mean, that. that's exactly what I just told. I mean, literally we had this conversation a few hours ago and that's, that's what I told her. I'm like, it was more of that feeling of that, you know, support. That is, that's you know. cool that you still have that. Yeah. I wish I could still have that because both of those mentors have been gone for yeah. quite a long time. But I, uh, but one of them is, is I, I remember all the time because hmm. he's part of a song. So it's was he the, your voice or not? Uh, well, one of them was, okay. but the other one was, 
his best friend who happened to be his accompanist who was one of my teachers but he oh, wasn't no even one of my teachers i didn't go to class with him but he was one was of the teachers that. That, but it was through him that i met my voice teacher and he just became like he was a mentor even after i got out of school like i didn't know how to tie a tie for my first my first job interview i had to go all the way from south troy to north troy to have him show me how to tie a tie no kidding yeah dude Wow, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, like, dude. You know what it's I mean? like, like this, this is like the little backstory of like, of uh, you know, teachers or people that you know we have met and that have have laid a mark on us. Somehow. Absolutely, they man. may not have known, and goes. I, I mean, I guess kind of connects back to service, you know. Well, they it does. may not have looked at it as you know, but it's like they're providing some kind of a service, you know. Absolutely, they are. And who right? knows? Maybe you were giving him some as well. By by saying, hey, I trust you and I'm coming to you for this. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, again, I, I heard this in a Jim Carrey uh, speech that it's it's the the biggest collateral. The most the biggest collateral that we have is the way we make people feel, because that's the thing that people will forget what you buy them. People will forget what you do for them, but they will never forget how you make them feel. I think and that's a quote from um I have I have a quote. Is it Maya Angelou? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. And I it makes sense that it came from Maya Angelou, but it's it's true. And you know, it's it's sad. I you know, that's a bittersweet realization to have because then when you realize how important that is and you realize the people that you've hurt over the years and how you've hurt people, regardless of whether you intend to or not. It kind of makes you look at things a little different, and yeah. maybe it'll yeah. you know maybe it'll slow you up to take a look at life a little bit differently and and act differently the next time you're in the same situation or or looking at the same person even because yes okay you may make somebody feel one way at one time but that doesn't mean that they're always going to feel that way I don't maybe maybe not no yeah I, I mean yeah no I think you're right I mean who knows you don't know and I don't. And maybe it's not uh, it's not the task to focus on. Maybe not. You know. Maybe not. Maybe the task is just right here. We don't. You know. Right now, it's all we have is right here, right now. It's true. All we have is the present. Right. It's all we have. Speaking of present, I think that's another thing is uh, which you kind of mentioned. Um, you know, whether or not you feel that you've done enough or have enough. I, it kind of again ties into what we're just talking about is is just being there for somebody and it's not about presence it's about presence right you know right presence I, with the enc right. and not the ents right and i think um you know through the years it may have come a little bit more about the boxes and packages and bags but uh <laughs> and gift cards <laughs> and envelopes and yeah so so just you know Again, try and stay. Even if everyone else is more of, uh, you know, in in the in the monetarily giving spirit, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Um, it's more about what we just talked about. It's more about a feeling. I mean, you you know, you can buy, you know, somebody a three hundred dollar gift and great and hug them and go upstairs and finish your vodka, but if you you know maybe buy them a twenty dollar gift and hang out downstairs with that person, spend a little time with them. It, it may have a, a lot more value to it. I like that. So, I mean, you know, we've kind of been, you know, Debbie Downer, the blue Christmas <laughs> kind of thing going on over here in a little bit. But what is, what is like one of your fondest, ho do you have any fond holiday memories? Yeah, I do. Um, usually, uh, well, my mom used to um like decorate to the nines, like the house was just filled and covered. Every like you could barely sit. Yeah, somehow I could picture that. Actually. Yeah, I could see that. Which it was cool. Like it was probably annoying. I'm sure at the time, and I would maybe even complain about it. But that's what I I think about. Like it was just always everything. Like there was nothing that wasn't decorated. Like from the oven to the refrigerator to the toilets, it was everything was covered. Um, so that was cool. Also, um, a friend of mine, our neighbors down the road, a couple of houses down, who he actually passed away a few years ago, um, but they used to have a Christmas Eve party. 
So we would, and again, it was like five houses down, so we would just walk down, and then he would walk, you know, we'd, of course, as kids, you cause a little ruckus Christmas Eve or whatever, but, you know, you always go down to his, his house, and his, you know, his parents would have a huge spread, and, and tons of gifts all over the place, and his, his grandfather used to, like, sneak us, like, these little mints when we were kids. And then we, I don't cool. know, it was just kind of a cool thing for some reason, that's what, that's what I remember, like, those kind of, like, moments like that. Yeah, I, um, some of my fondest memories, like actually, all of my fond Christmas memories are mostly of Christmas Eve. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, Christmas is one of those holidays that I never really like got the like I never had the the picturesque TV celebration on Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah, and you know, I kind of Christmas Eve was always when I was a kid and. Like when I was, yeah, I was old enough. We would uh, all get together and have a big Christmas Eve with my mom's side of the family, which you know my my grandmother made such fucking killer cookies. Like yeah. it was just, it was just, <laughs> it was so much fun, man. And it was like I could have cared. I never cared about presents. Right. It's that whole. Getting it's that whole and... thing. It was like I I remember one Christmas I put a Christmas list together, and. In the back of my mind, I knew there was no Santa, but I decided to ask for I asked for a drum set and I asked for a couple other things because I wanted to see if I wanted to see what this was really about. If this was, <laughs> and I got nothing on that Christmas list, and it wasn't the fact that I didn't get those things because it was never about things. Right. It was it was just about like I'm like damn I'm like is there really like I'm like obviously I'm meant to learn something different or or create something different for myself so i noticed that i gravitate towards celebrations more than i gravitate towards gifts and even, although when you you know when like when we had my 50th birthday celebration like i didn't even really want a big celebrate like yeah. i really wasn't it was nice it was nice. it was nice it was very cool to have everybody together yeah. and you know, I don't know if that'll ever happen again. Right. I just don't. Well, you're not going to turn 50 again. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's all fucking downhill from here, man. Um, yeah, you're right. Thank goodness you only turn 50 once. Yeah. Um, but it like Christmas Eve, but I some of my real big memories were I when I was singing in church and stuff throughout high school and like even when I had graduated high school like the first year before I had ever gotten into Freak Nation. Like those Christmases were awesome yeah. because I was out at like I was out at midnight mass singing. Like it was just it was just the tradition of it I really, really enjoy and I really appreciated. And I appreciated the music and I appreciate and I've and I lost that. And that's why I started to do the elf thing. Literally, because I was I needed to right. grasp to something that I just don't unfortunately, man, I just don't have it this hmm. year and i i really i decided that i was gonna be like you know what man if i don't have it i'm not forcing it right that's not a bad thing because i think you know when you push on something it's gonna push equally as hard back onto you and um that's just that's just the laws of nature so yeah that's probably a good idea yeah that you don't yeah um, i think so and i i think that I think another, it just made me think of another aspect, not that any of us can really do anything much to change it, but, um, you know, the traditions and, and going back to these things and you, you know, and I'm not old enough to know this fully, but like, you know, Sundays used to be, uh, you know, a day of rest or whatever. And there was, you know, things were closed down and people could, you know, and it's like now it's like, you know, you people are working on Christmas Eve until late. Then they get Christmas Day, and then as soon as they get settled in, like, oh, I have to go back to work tomorrow now again for Christmas. That's yeah, like, the Russian. A, yeah, it's just it's a bit much for people. I think that can have something to do with it. You know what I mean? You can't even like you can barely enjoy it. You know yeah, what I mean? you like, don't get a chance should, to enjoy should, it. Should shut everything. Should just shut down. It's like shut down the day after. Give everybody a fucking break. You know what I mean? Whether they need it or not, you know, some of them probably need it, but they just don't know they need it. No, we always need it. We always need it. I do, but it's just like, you know, like you said, things can go f fast, and you're just like, you know, and, you, and and I think that's 
that's how tradition can get lost. Uh, I think that is how tradition gets lost. But we also we also don't that that's the problem with our whiplash reaction. You know what I mean? Like we don't want tradition because tradition is this and that. Like everybody yeah. has, like, you know what I mean? So it's like I understand you got to create your own tradition. Right, that's but, fine. Yeah, I don't. I'm not telling you to 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 do the same tradition that I do. Do whatever you do. I don't care what it is, but just do it. And right, start a tradition. Yeah, man. Whatever, whatever it, it is. is, just start it. You don't have to. Yeah, just do it, and and you know, and I think continue to do it and and make space to do it. But it, sometimes it's hard. Like I said, it, it, you know, people. It's a fast paced world now. It's a different place, and uh, to make that space. It can be tough, and then to add, you know, the holiday blues on top of it, are even more tough. You know, make it more tough to to create that space. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I I'm right with you on that one because it's hard to find the space to want to create a tradition. Right. When you don't even want to get up and right when you don't even want to get up and hear about anything to do with it. Yeah, I don't have any answers, man. I'm not in the <laughs> you're not in the answer business I, I well i just i'm not you know i mean sometimes I, i'm in a better state of mind i'm i'm in a more like i'd like to be able to create a little bit of uh inspiration for people but um it, yeah it, speaking it, of that speaking of inspiration you created a little bit of inspiration okay. this year so you want to you want something for your new christmas list That's man true. you yeah. know get timmy's book get tpp's book now never underestimate the power of you Yep, you know? go to Amazon. Uh, never underestimate the power of you. If you follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, we um, there's always posts about it. So links or whatever, ch- check it out. It makes a great stocking, stocking stuffer. Yeah, and with New Year right around the corner, I'm, for most of you mere mortals out there, my New Year is not for another three months. I realized that starting that tradition for myself actually – provided myself a boost that i did not expect this God, year three months already yeah dude like 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 me just saying that i'm gonna start looking at new year as my birthday instead of my birthday like literally i feel like i have three more months in the year right. even though the calendar's flipping i don't feel that way like i really feel like i have so it was like that was like a little hack that I created. Cool. Oh, for my, that's what you need. Created again, for myself. Create your own tradition, that, and, and if it works again, if it works for you, do it. I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that. If it works for you and it doesn't harm anybody else, then do it. And other people, you know, if unfortunately if some of them have a problem with it, then maybe they're not really your people. You know. Yeah, maybe not. Which is shitty, and it can feel shitty, um, but. You know, I think maybe long term it, it would be bet it's best to just uh um let go, maybe. Yeah, let go. Let go. Let go of them jingle bells, baby. That's right, man. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so in, in in all sincerity, we thank you so much uh for listening every week. Uh just keep up with us on the socials and stuff and uh we are heading into year number four in twenty twenty three, man, and we're not stopping. We've got we're we're just laying the groundwork for more stuff and trying to branch out in our own different ways and and trying to bring bring us uh, bring more people in. So please share everything and keep uh, keep sharing, keep uh, keep clicking on all the things. But uh, yeah, I, it, real quick, I just want to, before I forget, um, we haven't had a uh, review for the podcast in a bit. So if you, if you if you want to write up a nice little review for us, that would be an awesome Merry Christmas present for us. If yeah, you haven't we'll left a review, it, please read it on the air. Yeah, um, we'd love to read it on the air. Um, and please go out and create a new tradition. And if you are lonely, please try to go out and do something to combat that loneliness. Don't please don't isolate. This is not the time to isolate. As a matter of fact, no time is the time to isolate unless you really just need to decompress and take some time for yourself. Um, and if you are isolating and you really need help, please, 988 is the is the crisis and national suicide hotline number now. Um, it's all combined, uh, although the 1-800-273-8255 does still work. It's not, it's not. It has not been cut off. You can still use that number, but 988 
is the quickest way to get to that. And if you are struggling, please find help. Um, the biggest thing you could do for yourself in the new year is to get yourself into therapy or get yourself to your doctor. Check in on yourself. Check in on your loved ones. Check in on your elders and make sure you take care of your kids, man. So until next time, get well. Be safe. Stay above. Thank you for giving us a listen. New episodes every Wednesday. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, you can share, rate, review, and even subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Other ways to support the show? Follow us on social media. Share the content. Share our episodes. You can also buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash above ground pod. For further concerns, show ideas, or just to say hi, you can email us at above ground podcast at gmail. Once again, thank you for listening and supporting mental health. Keep the conversation going and stay above.